the Americans' endless appetite for buying whatever they want, whenever they want. It's about time. It's become the conventional wisdom that the U.S. economy is built on Americans' endless appetite to buy lots and lots of stuff. When the economy falters, we're told spending is our patriotic duty. But suddenly, Americans can't spend like they used to. Store shelves are emptying, and it can take months to find a car, refrigerator, or sofa. If this continues, we may need to learn to do without and live more like the Europeans. Americans tend to overspend or buy cheap substitutes rather than save up for longer-lasting, better quality goods. That's a function of the accessibility of cheap goods, of having more space to store our purchases, and also of a culture where buying stuff feeds the empty part of our souls. European souls are not necessarily more fulfilled, they just find other, more eco-friendly ways to shut out the darkness, like going on a long bike ride. After all, Americans haven't always acted like this. We've entered an age of overabundance. We consume much more than we used to in more than other countries. Household consumption makes up only about 50% of GDP in Germany, while it makes 67% in the US. And these numbers reflect big changes in Americans' lifestyle. The average U.S. home was 1,700 square feet in 1980, by 2015 it was 2,000 square feet, even though the number of people in the average household shrank. In 1980, 15% of households didn't have a TV, now only about 1% don't. In 2015, 40% of American households had three or more TVs, including 30% of households earning less than $40,000 a year. In 1980, only 13% of households had two or more refrigerators, in 2015 30% did, including many low-earning households. Clothing purchases have increased fivefold since 1980 and the average garment will only be worn seven times before it's disposed of. To make this happen, we have to work more, and to work more means less time with family, less vacations, less health, less sleep and less everything. The latest news is that more Americans are saying goodbye to Uncle Sam and his American way of life. As Bloomberg frames it, more Americans are relocating to Europe and Canada, driven across the Atlantic by the rising cost of living, inflated house prices, a surging dollar and political rancor at home. The American working culture has a reputation for not affording employees a good work-life balance. More time outside of work means more opportunities to explore their new surroundings, immerse themselves in their community, spend time with family and enjoy a better quality of life and happiness. Apparently, happiness thrives in Nordic countries, some Western European countries, and in Canada, New Zealand and Australia. The US ranks 18th in these global quality of life ratings, having slipped a few places lately, apparently because we've pared down the socio-economic supports that helped other nations win the happiness jackpot. Also, inequality in the US, already high, has continued to rise. As our national wealth goes into fewer hands, perceptions of corruption have also increased, a perception that can weigh heavily on the national mood. Americans die younger than people in other high-income countries, and drug poisonings, gun injuries and motor vehicle crashes are largely to blame. To see how the United States measures up in terms of life expectancy, we have to compare the death rates with those of a dozen other countries with similar economies. The researchers found that men and women in the United States live 2.2 fewer years than residents in similar countries. American men and women could only look forward to a life expectancy of 76.4 and 81.2 years, respectively, compared with the 78.6 and 83.4 years of their peers abroad. Why, with so much wealth, are Americans asked to sacrifice their happiness, their gains in lifespan, their cost of living increases in social security, and other social goods? Why are economic and military strength the only measures of our success? With higher prices, a more eco-conscious population and less trade bringing fewer cheap products, Americans may have to get used to consuming like Europeans. We will certainly not be deprived, but we will trim back our excesses, perhaps be more thoughtful about what we buy and purchase fewer, higher quality goods. European levels of consumption coexist with lower levels of growth. It feels like our voracious consumption is what fuels the economy. But that needn't be the case. 
Long-term, sustainable growth doesn't come from going deep into debt to buy stuff we don't really need. It comes from technology and innovation, where we come up with new products and better ways of doing things. An economy based on consumption is not sustainable. What's great and unique about American consumption is openness to new products and new ideas. Historically, America was a nation of early adopters. This, not just volume, has been what has propelled American growth because it creates a vigorous marketplace where new products can find a market, experiment and improve. Buying smart, while maintaining an openness to new things, can be the foundation of a more sustainable and growing economy.